Hello, and welcome to another episode of Brands Brands. I'm your host, Mark Brand from Alpha Controls, one of Canada's leading suppliers of sensing, measuring, and controlling instrumentation for a variety of different industries. For those of you tuning in for the first time, a big welcome. So today, we're going to dive into the fascinating world of temperature mapping. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a curious newbie, stick around as we break down how and what you need to do to nail it every single time. For those of you asking yourself, what is temperature mapping? Temperature mapping is all about measuring and recording temperatures in critical storage areas, such as fridges, freezers, incubators, and even warehouses. So why do we need to do this? Well, for some of these critical areas that are storing things like food and vaccines, we have to make sure that they're fit for their intended use. Now to do this, you need to use some pretty sophisticated instrumentation, like temperature sensors, either connected to a high accuracy readout device or a KAVS validator. Now, if you wanted to go wireless, you could also use data loggers. Like with any type of instrumentation out there, there's a lot of variety. So always make sure you pick the one with the best accuracy to achieve the most optimal results for your temperature study. Always make sure your instruments are calibrated to a 17025 accredited calibration lab, such as Alpha Controls. And make sure the software that you're using is CFR Part 11 compliant. So before we dive into any of the documentation that's gonna be required to perform your temperature mapping, it's always a good idea to do an equipment check just to make sure everything's set up and installed correctly. This will also help you make sure that you have all the right tools on board when it's time to do the mapping. Now one question we get a lot is, how many temperature sensors am I gonna need and where am I gonna put them? Now that's a great question. Now this information is all part of your protocol and there's lots of standards out there that can also help you out, like ISPE or the ICH. So for spaces 50 to 70 cubic feet, you're gonna need about 10 sensors. Anything else will require a full evaluation for number and location of points. So once you get all that sorted out, you're ready to complete your protocol. The mapping study is found in the OQ and PQ portion of the protocol. So for a chamber, you're gonna to have to do an empty chamber study in the OQ and a full chamber study in the PQ. For warehouses, that could get a bit tricky due to the size of the space. Now once the protocol's been executed and everything's been documented, it's time to get it signed off with the final report. The final report should paint a very clear picture of the process, summarize the results, and document any discrepancies. Now once it's been signed off, your mapping study's done, and the space is ready for use. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out via social media or phone. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of Brands Brands.